Police officers, firefighters, EMTs, nurses of Reddit. When have you laughed when you really shouldn't have? NSW. During my EMT basic clinical rotations, my buddy Greg and I are working in an emergency room trying to do as many ECGs as possible so that we could check that off our list of clinical skills that we needed to do. Greg is hooking up an absolutely enormous woman to ECG leads. To accomplish this, he indicates to her that he will have to move her left breast to gain access to her chest wall. I'm not exaggerating when I say that she weighed 400 pounds. Her left breast probably weighed a solid 40 pounds by itself. So Greg, using the back of his forearm, is pushing aside her left breast, or trying to, and failing. So he's basically rubbing her left breast with his forearm, trying to get it out of the way. His face is about 12 inches from her face. She leans close to Greg, moans, and says, You a titty man, ain't ya? I and I had to leave. I answered a fire alarm at a hotel room once. I knock on the door and a rail thin, 90 LB. Woman answered the door in nothing but a t-shirt. Tell her that we need to have access to the hotel room just to verify that there wasn't an issue. I walk in and immediately see a 300 plus mid 50s guy. The woman was in her 30s. Totally naked. Handcuffed to the bed. Alright. Whatever. Standard question do you know how the alarm was set off? Oh yeah, I accidentally hit it with his thrown boxes. Alright mom have nice night. Cue hilarious laughter from stairwell back to the firehouse. I admitted a patient to the surgical floor who had a baton stuck in his colon. When getting report I couldn't help but chuckle. It was the first time I dealt with someone who had a foreign object where it shouldn't have been. The worst part was when I showed him the intraoperative pictures of them removing it he asked the surgeon where the glitter went. Don't worry he'll keep finding glitter for years. It never goes away. I work as an x-ray tech in a heavily hispanic area in the US. I don't know a lot of Spanish, but I know just enough to get by. We get this patient in the ear and there are three of us trying to fumble our way through this exam in our broken Spanish. We eventually get through the exam and we're all kind of congratulating each other on knowing just enough Spanish. Then out of the middle of nowhere this guy says you know you guys speak pretty good Spanish and perfect English. I guess none of us decided to ask if he spoke English. Was an EMT. My partner was doing a head to toe on a little old lady that fell at a nursing home. She gets to the patient's left hip, squeezes it and says mom, how long have you had this growth on your hip little old lady replies in a TV worthy Boston Brahmin accent, that's my breast, dear, gave myself a bloody nose when I tried to hide my laughter by shoving my face into the O2 bag and smacking it on the tank. I had a patient high on some type of LSD PCP combo. We found him jumping from couch to couch in a lobby covered in freshly cut hair that wasn't his. We finally get him to the ambulance when he proceeds to scream at my partner. You have beautiful eyes. I am gonna frick you in the ass. And then begins to cry for his mother. We make it to the hospital and the PT's vocabulary decreases to only meatballs. Every question the nurse asked, that was his response. We try to remain professional as possible, but sometimes you can't help but laugh. Responded to a fatal fire. When I arrived on scene and went to where the body was located, the trooper introduced me to the deceased. Trooper. Oh. My name. Where are my manners? Meet Frank. Deceased. Say hello Frank. Frank. Trooper. As you can see he had a late night of drinking and a bad case of setting himself on fire. Laughing in front of a dead guy who set himself on fire is not one of my strong moments. Uh one of my friends was an EMT and he responded to a call from a guy who got attacked by his cat. Turns out the guy tried to frick his cat and the cat wasn't having any of it. My friend said that was the only time he and his partner laughed in front of a patient. So I was riding along with my dad who was a firefighter paramedic and we went to a house for a mentally handicapped female who had fallen and couldn't get up. I should mention that this female lives with her husband who is also mentally handicapped and they have a caretaker who checks in on them daily but doesn't hang around 24 stroke 7. Anyway we get her sat up and my dad asks his other medic to run out to the ambulance to grab an extra cold compress to put on her head where she fell but she says that there is an ice pack in her freezer that will work just fine in the next room. Well the other medic goes into the other room and looks for about 2 minutes before coming back with a bag of frozen vegetables that would work as well. 
The mentally handicapped lady looks him straight in the face and says, That's not a cold pack those are vegetables. Are you retarded? I was administering IV push meds to a patient. Their guest was German, and asks me with a giant smile those are the Woodstock drugs that make him a happy hippo. Yeah I freaking lost it. Not me, but a friend who was in a nurse at the time, told me this story. Apparently foreign objects in the anus are pretty routine, but this guy came in with a vibe that had crawled its way up there and was being very stubborn about getting out, and it was still on. So this was my friend's first patient like this. He's asking him the normal questions, and then a doctor, knowing what's going on and knowing that it's my friend's first time, walks by the door and says do you want US to get IT out, or just change the batteries? Patient who was in police custody and high out of his mind on something. A nurse enters to use a catheter to get urine sample for analysis. In the process of doing that the patient screams IT feels like a flies fricking my dong. Older guy who may or may not have been there mentally giving me a lecture on how he knew I was a liar because my lips were moving. Had to step out of the room to laugh. Used to work in an adult and pediatric ED as a scribe. I followed a doctor. NP or PAN wrote their charts. One time a patient came in for vaginal injury so the PA I'm assigned to, who is my father's age, says ah, that'll be interesting, and we go in. The lady is very friendly, bubbly, overweight and with long, fake nails. He asks her what brings her to the ED, and she says well, you see, I just got my nails done, and I, I was pleasuring myself and really going to town down there, and it felt really good. And I scratched my cuter. She laughed awkwardly and I couldn't handle myself and had to leave. The PA kept himself together and told the patient I left because my job was over as I wrote down her complaint. But honestly I was crying in the hallway with another tech who overheard. The door was shut. But she was a loud and proud patient and the unit was quiet. I scratched my cuter became a response to what's up for a bit. I was an Inton firefighter back when I was in college and we received this distress call from the senior home one day. Apparently, there was an old lady about 70-75 years old who was pee drunk and she broke her hip walking through the hallway. When we got there, she was on the ground covered in her own crap. The thing I laughed at was what she was saying while on the ground. Old lady, get the frick off me. Captain, mom, you need to hold still while the ambulance comes. Old lady, hey, hey, Oscar, her housekeeper, is that you? Captain, yes mom, Oscar is right here. Old lady, well, frick you. I had a gentleman commit suicide by placing a clear plastic bag over his head and running a line from a helium tank. Apparently it's one of the least painful ways to go. You just get sleepy and pass out. No oxygen starvation. Anyways me and my partner are waiting for the deputy since it's clear he has been dead a while. We start talking in the bathroom with the body. So what do you think his last words were? Goodbye world. Said in a Mickey Mouse voice. He'll never forget that I had hiccups for 2 hours after we got done laughing our asses off. The report and dealing with the family was super awkward. AEMT working a standby at one of our men in nightclubs a couple summers ago. I come back from handing over a transport to find a man with a hole in the front of his jeans all covered in blood. He was sitting calmly next to his friend joking and having a good time. Ask him what's going on and he admits to drinking and taking quite a bit of coke. He states that he is not in any pain but worried about all the blood. We expose his crotch to find that he had apparently impaled his scrotum on the cleat of a pool umbrella and now had a testicle protruding from the hole. His very British friend saw what happened and yelled, Bollocks me mate, your bean is out of the bag I had to excuse myself for a minute. Had a pregnant lady about to pop and brought her upstairs. The L&D nurses at this facility were pretty snobby and always seemed to have an attitude problem. I gave them my report and told them that according to my assessment they needed to prep for delivery ASAP. The charge nurse rolled her eyes at me and began condescendingly interviewing the patient, telling her she's sure that the patient will be able to go home tonight. About 5 minutes go by they finally get her over to the bed from my stretcher. I get my paperwork signed. The nurse goes to check for dilation and lifts up the sheet only to find that the patient is crowning. She immediately starts yelling for help and gives me a dirty look. I whispered told you so, winked, and walked out as the rest of the nurses walked in to help. Not my most professional moment but I had a good chuckle. 
My dad's a police officer and has always been known for his dark dad humor. One unfortunate day, a motorcyclist ran a red light at an intersection just before a truck stop and was run over. The rider's head and helmet were caught under the wheels of the truck and popped. As he tells the story, LT, Lieutenant, shows up and asks, what happened here? What are we stepping in that so sticky and I was like, well, the rider lost his mind. I thought it was funny, as did my dad. Apparently the lieutenant did not. When I was an EMT I had a psych patient that had been picked up at the airport by the cops after he was found wandering around barefoot. My report from them was quite vague, so I didn't really know what to expect when I was asking him questions. He didn't seem very oriented and kept drifting off to sleep. I asked him if he knew what year it was and he said 1985 and he suddenly yelled 1.21 gigawatts I was so startled I couldn't help but laugh. I still don't know whether he was messing with me or not but either way he must really like back to the future. I was an EMT. We responded to a call at a nursing home for a psychological. Get the info from the nurse that the dear little old lady is apparently hallucinating cats. I walked into the patient's room and asked. Mia what seems to be the problem here my partner and the nurse ran from the room. I found them literally on the floor laughing in the hallway. A young lady admitted into the air, embarrassed to death with a small piece of plastic from a toy stuck in her lady parts. While getting an IV from the nurse, she complained about getting jabbed with a metal needle. The nurse started to explain how the IV catheter is actually plastic, to which she responded, I've got enough plastic stuck in me right now thank you. Back in my army days we were in the process of doing an 18 mile ruck march. It's pretty hot out. All of a sudden one of my squad members collapsed to the ground. The medics rush to him and start sticking an IV in his arm while asking him questions. Do you know where you are? Do you know what month it is? Do you know what day of the week it is? He looks up confused. UHH. Waffles? No. You freaking retard. Let's get him out of here. Ex corrections officer, I was caught on camera laughing wildly while having to subdue a naked man covered in fesses wielding a butt shank. He used the poop to paint on Peter Chris makeup. That crap cracked me up. We had an OD we responded to that turned into a running joke at the station. Some chick tried to kill herself and took like 2 milligrams of fentanyl. Normal doses are in MICROgrams, not milligrams. Inaho, got her close enough to the ear and pumped her full of Narcan and she woke up. Partner opened the back doors and said all better hun she was pissy about it and bitched about how we didn't know what we were doing. I was being a bit of a smartest and said well the Narcan was a good guess then. To which she screamed. Narcan don't do crap. And now whenever we use Narcan it is good form to shout Narcan don't do crap while pushing it. NP here. I work both in patient trauma and in an ED. I have many stories where we cracked up. 1. The guy who shoved a butane canister up his rectum. It was removed in the ore. And he made it without a colostomy the surgeons worked it down his rectum till another pulled it out. They were very afraid to use cautery. Butane. There were many comments about explosive diarrhea that day. 2. We had a 17 year old come in with acute alcohol toxicity from bus chugging. Yes, it's actually called bus chugging. You get the picture. Now, the answer to every freak up by a teenager is an inside joke they were probably butt chugging. 3. 93 year old woman. Found altered by her family. We do a full stroke workup. I ordered a blood alcohol level. It comes back 230.23 for those of you who don't know. Sweetest drunk grandma ever. She loved telling all of us how cute we were. She metabolized her freedom and was told to watch the vodka. Honestly, if you make it to 230 at age 93, you are winning and I'm not checking your liver. <laughs> Nurse here. My hospital had semi-comatose elderly woman with a complex Hispanic name. Her family called her Lali. I was walking by her room and heard her coughing and choking. I ducked my head in to see if everything was okay. There was my nursing supervisor attempting to feed her, with little success. Lali continued to cough and choke. I paused a moment. My nursing supervisor looked at me. I asked, Lali gagging we both lost it. My wife was a nurse. Dude came in with a light bulb stuck in his rectum. They had to fill it with plaster to get it out without shattering. She laughed when they filled it with plaster. I'm a police officer. Had a guy in the emergency department following a traffic crash. 
He'd blown numbers on the preliminary test for alcohol and had also admitted to using amphetamine shortly before driving, so we needed a blood sample. The nurse is doing her thing, checking him over because hey, he did hit a parked car hard enough to shift it a good 30 feet or so. Now I've got some questions to ask you in case you have a concussion. First of all, what day is it Saturday? Alright, now who was the first Australian Prime Minister junkie? Driver looks at her like she just peed on his foot and replies I don't give a crap. I laughed so hard I cried a little. Probably not appropriate but couldn't help it. Both my parents used to do volunteer M's and I remember a call coming while we were on our way to church so we got to stay in the car while they went to meet the ambulance at the scene of the wreck. It was a grisly ass scene with dismembered limbs in the median of the highway. My parents told us not to look. 15 minutes and my dad is screaming and my mom is laughing her ass off. Apparently there was a rattlesnake near a body part and when it moved it moved the body part, then started slithering towards him. Imagine a burly redneck screaming like a 12 yo girl. I think he crap himself a little too. We had a dead teenager come in from a tragic collision. She had an internal decapitation after a priest crashed into the back of the car. A nurse asked in a surprised manner how that can happen. I told her I'm not sure because I thought priests only rear-ended altar boys. The doctor had to leave the room because he couldn't stop laughing. Responded to a DOA to confirm death for PD. Guy was dead laying on his dining room floor on a chair next to him was a shirt that said I'm with Jesus. No idea why but I lost it and cracked up which made both cops start laughing too. Thankfully the deceased's family and friends were outside. I work in an oncology outpatient floor and had a patient that I needed a urine sample for. About 10 minutes go by and I get a little worried so I knock on the door. He opens the door and his trousers are down and he goes, did you want urine or semen? I lost it. When I was a cop we had this suicide. Guy hung himself from a tree in the middle of a large field. Me and a few other cops are standing there looking up and trying to figure out how to get him down. A bunch of concerned citizens had gathered around, as well. Suddenly, we hear sirens approaching. Everyone turns around to see M's come bouncing across the field, skidding to a stop right in front of the tree. Two paramedics jump out with their kit. Where's the injured party? Apparently they hadn't gotten the word. No one says anything for a moment. Then one of the other cops points to the suicide. He's over there. Fellas, just hanging around. Even a few of the citizens laughed. It was that kind of neighborhood. Vet tech. I work emergency and critical care and my favorite cases are marijuana toxicity because of the clients. And we don't get a lot of the THC cases that end in comas. I try to be professional. But my god some of these people. The two that stick out was a guy telling me the story of the dog eating a bag of weed a mile a minute and showed up eating Doritos. He was really upset that I was laughing. And a bit ago we had an elderly couple bring in their cute pug mix that was high as frick. Grandpa was probably orbiting the moon and just kept telling my co-worker that the dog was like really nice. Grandma seemed oblivious and was concerned that something was wrong with the dog. They let us run a test which was positive for THC. Grandma tells the dog he is grounded and that's where we lost all composure. Had a patient in a hotel take what he thought was MDMA. Turns out his dealer sold him some flacker. Anyway, we get there. Police have him handcuffed and hogtied halfway in an elevator. We give him a bunch of verse but flacker is a heck of a drug and nothing touches it. So this guy is just going nuts. Rambling nonsense and threatening us but every time he completes a sentence he ends it with being like an elevator. We get him tied to our stretcher avid he's just screaming I am gonna kill you, behind. Okay, so we get called out for a lift assist. No big deal. We get on scene and the family is gathered around this guy in the car. They say he seems really weak and can't get out of the car. I do a quick assessment and he's not breathing and has no pulse. I don't know why. Maybe I was tired. Maybe my filter malfunctioned. But I turned to the family and asked, you all do know he's dead. Right you can guess how they took it. Not my proudest moment. In case you're wondering we did get him back shortly after that so I'm not a total loss. If you see this while scrolling you've been visited by the rare double banana you will be granted 5 years of good luck but only if you comment thank you oh sacred long yellow ones. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't.
Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.